before getting married, I think I was 16 and I started questioning, um, you know, is there a God? How do you know if being a Christian is the way to go versus Islamic? I started questioning those things because maybe because I met somebody who was Christian. And not only that, my aunt and uncle would always take me to church with them coming up, but I would never do anything when I went to church. I would just sit there, but I would see everybody else like clapping, but I felt bad. I'm like, I'm just sitting here. I'm not going to do anything because we were raised Islamic, which means you don't you don't clap, you don't do any of that. Meeting a Christian, going to church with my husband, who was raised as a Christian. So I'm just like, well, who's right? How do you know? And at this time, I had had a child out of wedlock, and I did not want to raise my son without knowing God in his life. And so I pretty much gave my Christian boyfriend an uh, ultimatum. And I'm like, we have to do something. Either we're going to the masjid, or we're going to the church. And it wasn't long after that, that when I went to a service, my entire life changed. for our children on today. I thank you for my companion. I thank you for this day and how you have blessed us on today. God, I thank you because you are the great I am. I thank you, oh Lord, that you have drawn us closer to you and Lord, that you have a mandate for our life. We thank you for purpose. We thank you for destiny. We thank you for each and every one on today. We just thank you for all of your many blessings in Jesus' name, even as we sing on today, as we worship you. Help us, oh Lord, to just give in to you and we thank you right now in Jesus name amen Throughout my journey, I found out the highest form of worship is what God has called you to do and to walk that out in obedience. Even the trees worship God, their highest form. Why? Because they blow, the leaves do what they do. So everything that has been created in its purpose is the highest form of worship because I believe worship is the oxygen that I breathe. Without worship, I have no way of breathing and living because worship is what I live for. go out with the girls and hang out and drink and all of that but it was like I went to service one day with my husband's parents and he wasn't even there when it happened I went to service and an altar there was an altar call and the person that was preaching whatever he was speaking he it was like he was dissecting everything that I was going through and my entire thought process, everything changed. The tears began to roll. I don't know what I was going through at the time, but obviously whatever was being preached, it touched my heart. And from then on, I just began to want more. I wanted more. And that encounter just changed my life. I never wanted to go back to where I was. It was a joy that I was given. It was a peace that I was given. It was a, a love. I just had a whole different mindset. It was wonderful. Um, so I wanted more of that. And as I began to grow as an individual and grow in my marriage, because I did have struggles. I'll say we, we had tough times raising up three children. Um, 
my husband went away. It was just, it was tough, but I, I maintained the job. I went to school, I got certificates, I got uh, degrees, and so it pushed me to do better. I didn't allow my situation to, to halt me or to keep me in a stagnant position, but God helped me through all the way. It was prayer, it was uh, engaging and learning the word of God and understanding what it meant to fast and, and knowing what it meant to, 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 to share at times with people or to witness. So my journey has been different and I wouldn't take anything for it. Um, and because of my encounter with the Spirit of God, I'm talking about when God takes you through situations and there is an encounter, you'll never be the same. And I'm not, I'm not the same as what I was. Yeah. I can love if somebody does something to me. You know, that hard love sometimes that you have to give to your children, sometimes it, it, it's, it, you gotta have a deeper love for people. My journey really just pushed me to want better, even in the workplace. I don't wanna work real hard and be in a restaurant. I don't wanna work real hard to, to have multi-millions. That's not my goal. My goal is to be comfortable, to be debt free, and to be able to manage what I have and be content where I am. I, I choose not to have a struggling life. I don't think that's what God wants me to have. And you know, I know that we've been taught to work, 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 but sometimes I take that Usai moment because I'm not young as I used to be, you know? And I wanna make wise decisions. I, wanna, I don't wanna work hard, I wanna work smart. And so for, uh, for me, the financial piece of it, it's like, okay, if you can get out of debt in three months, pay off $20,000 debt in three months, when all of them years I had these loans, I'm like, what have I been doing? It was only when I sought God to say, Lord, I need wisdom. When he showed me how to get out of debt by multiplying your dollars with someone else or to sometimes discipline yourself and put this amount of money here, it's just like, why haven't I been doing this? Gradually learning the wisdom as you go along, but using what we have to, to get rid of it because we don't discipline ourselves, we'll keep getting into debt while trying to get out and we'll never go anywhere. It's like you're going around in a circle. Vision was given to me by God. I'm telling you, the vision was given to me so clearly. It was an answer to prayer. You know, we were um, investigating different alternatives mm -hmm. and looking for one that we could trust without any hidden motives. Mm -hmm. You know, when it was presented, just kind of impromptu. I think we were buying some juice, mm -hmm. and uh, it was mentioned, but it resonated with our spirit that this is something that you know we were looking for, and that's somebody that we can trust and part of it. You just know that what we ask, it shall be given. Simple as that. And we're going to walk through this program, and we're going to discipline ourselves, and we're going to help motivate ourselves through this, and think everything will work out just fine. Even though it's, it's work to some degree, it's about really helping people to get to another place. Yeah. You know, and putting that time in, mm -hmm. um, in the wee hours or throughout the day, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. Because I remember what my struggles were coming up. I remember having to balance so many things. Mm -hmm. But if I help somebody along the way, and we don't know how that's going to be, everything also come back to us. Yeah multiply, yeah. you know, we won't be able to number it. I love having my grandchildren around me, but I've also learned that they're not mine, per, per se. You know, you have your first grand, it's like, you almost feel like it's your child. But I had to learn that there had to be a boundary, even in raising and to help with them, or to cut the strings when it came time to my own children.
And so it's really a learning process for me and for them, even in my marriage. It's like, there's so much that I still learn, even in 31 years of marriage. And there's a lot of disciplining me in order to accommodate his needs, and then he does the same for me. So you have that balance, but you, I know my order. If my husband is the final say in the house, then he's the final say. One thing I did learn over this um, time is that we're not perfect as individuals. He and I are not perfect. So if he makes a, a decision and it's a poor decision, I'm not so quick to bail out on him because I could be in that same position. Having that forgiveness and being able to overcome certain things, it's not so, being, not being so quick to run out the door. picture and you say what now Lord it's not just about me but how do I handle the situation so for me it's like I'm looking at the whole picture if I do this then how does this affect the family unit don't forget to tune in next week for Lundy family dinner last year around this time I was laid up in the hospital with COVID I remember driving up that night and just kind of like breaking down and crying mm -hmm. and crying because again, you had no control, you couldn't see her, you didn't know if this was going to be goodbye. Thank God, mommy made it out, but they didn't. But, you know, so I don't look down on what you did. Me I appreciate either. that, and I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, I brought... Like, you, were, you said I did I said, okay. okay. All right. I did, like, great. You did a good job. Okay, you did a good job. Oh, thank you. you. Like, that was really, like, mentally tough. Mm-hmm. It was, like, like three a, weeks. Of that, like, thanks, thanks so, so much, much for, for tuning, tuning in, in to Lundy Family, Family Dinner. Dinner.